Hey everyone, Noodle here. Today's topic came from your requests over at Vault42 on Discord. So please keep posting there. If enough people ask for a topic, we make it happen. Today, I bring you camp items that also produce resources. Of course, all of these resources can also be found just out in the wild, but it's pretty awesome to have a steady drip supply right in your own camp. We all play differently, and we all have our unique needs and priorities in the wasteland. So it wouldn't be fair to rank these items in any order of value or importance. Instead, I'm just going to show you 10 of my personal favorites that I actually set up and use in my camp. And you can decide for yourself if these are things that you care about and if they can benefit your playstyle. First up, I present you with the newest addition to my inventory, the motorized butter churn. I got my butter churn as a reward for running Fasnacht, one of the 49 times that I ran it. It produces cooking oil. Every 10 minutes, oil. It can store up to 12 cans of cooking oil at a time, making it a reliable source of obtaining this vital resource. Cooking oil can be used for actual cooking, to make Fasnacht donuts, for instance. And it can also be broken down into components and used for crafting other things like energy ammo. I'm a big flamer gal, and I'm always making fuel. This thing looks cool. I was very excited about the rustic and mechanized look, but a little sad that it needs to be hooked up to power. It doesn't take a lot of power, but I go through great lengths to hide my generators and wires. But I was finally able to place this thing in such a way that the wire isn't too obvious, so it's all good. Next up, I have the Pemmican Collector. This is one of the rewards in Season 17 Scoreboard. It looks like three slabs of bacon on a grill, but it actually produces pemmican. Pemmican is food that doesn't go bad. This is a really great resource. And unlike the butter churn, this collector doesn't require power. It just sits there and makes food that never spoils. Big thumbs up from me on this one. The Butterfly Sanctuary. This is the prettiest item in my camp. It's both decorative and functional. It produces waste acid and requires no power. I got mine from the atomic shop a while ago, and I'm sure it will come around again. I do see it sometimes. I love having this little slice of nature in every single one of my camps regardless of that camp style. It's just so beautiful and serene and very easy to collect from since I just pass by it all the time. It makes acid every three minutes, so it's actually quite productive. Somewhere near the butterfly sanctuary, I usually have my tree sap collector, which produces adhesive. Doesn't require power, of course, it's actually a tree, which is extra cool because it's one more type of tree that you can add to your camp and make it a little bit more immersive and natural. Adhesive is very tricky to find out on a wasteland, and it's useful for weapons and armor mods. Well, maybe not that tricky to find. I'm sure that Oscapt, a lord of junk, can tell you all the items that you can scrap to get adhesive and where to find them. But me, I like to stay at home and just harvest from my tree. This was another Atomic Shop purchase, and I actually see this one show up pretty often, so keep an eye out for it. My least favorite is the water boiler. Not to be confused with the water purifier right next to it. The boiler is just ugly. I mean, it's realistic, and it doesn't actually need power connectors, which is super cool. But still, look at it. It does produce boiled water though, so I can't really complain. We use boiled water for pretty much everything in cooking. And going over to the river to collect dirty water and then boil it. <gasps> oh, the hardships. So many wasted seconds. No more. With this but ugly infernal machine, you can just run by and collect boiled water. I find it to be quite practical. I hardly ever use my water purifier, actually. I find purified water all over the place. Every single camp has them. But I use this thing quite often. You can get the plan for the water boiler from Mortimer over at Crater if you have a high enough Raider's reputation. The coffee machine and the company tea machine always have a place side by side in all of my camps. Coffee and tea are just cool in general, but they also give you buffs in the game. 
Coffee restores action points to 300, and Company T gives a high boost to AP regeneration, disease resistance, and also restores a small amount of health. Oh, and satisfies a large amount of thirst. Both of them give you like two rads, nothing that I really care about. The tea machine is another one of those items that you can get from Mortimer at Crater. And the coffee machine, I have the special Slocum's Joe variety from some event that I can't remember. Oh, it was a bundle. It was a full Slocum's Joe bundle. That's why it's all pink and pretty. The standard regular coffee machine that does all the same things just appears in the atomic shop every once in a while. My next three camp items are all animals. We have the Brahmin pen, the chicken coop, and the beehive. Now the Brahmin and the chickens cannot be placed at the same time in the same camp because they produce the same thing. But the bees don't interfere with anyone. Both the Brahmin and the chickens make fertilizer. But Brahmin also gives milk. When I'm rocking a bloodied build, and if the space allows, I set up my Brahmin for the milking. When I don't care about the milk, and if my camp real estate is tight, I just set up the chicken coop. I use fertilizer for cams and explosives. The Brahmin pen plan is pretty easy to come by. You can find it just laying around in the world, and you can get it as a reward for claiming workshops, running daily ops, vendors have it, most player vendors have it. It's a really common plan. The coop, on the other hand, I got mine from Minerva, which she has every once in a while. I hope you're all enjoying Minerva's appearance on this channel, and Tommy's, of course. Remember that if you ever want to know about a specific item in her inventory, when she'll have it, where she'll be when she'll have it, and all that, you can always use the Minerva bot that we run at Vault 42 on Discord. We have a whole separate video on how Minerva works and how to use the bot. It's very simple. Check out that full video when you get a chance. It's life-changing for those who shop at Minerva's Emporium. Now, where were we? Ah, the bees! The bees make honey. Honey doesn't spoil, and I use it mostly for cooking and brewing. It's just a fun item to have. There are beehives all over Appalachia, and there's actually one nearby here as well. But when you harvest from a wild beehive, with the exception of those at the Fasnacht event, you get attacked by bees. Honey beasts also drop honey, but you know, you have to fight them for it. This is a pain-free way to get your honey. You can get a plan for this from Sam over at Foundation, if you have a high enough reputation with the settlers. So there you have it, boys and girls. Oh wait, there's a bonus item. I've been running past this thing all day and it's such a huge part of my every camp and such a natural part of my every camp that I just forget that it's there. This is pretty self-explanatory. You run by, you grab some radstag meat and grill it up, making grilled radstag. Grilled radstag helps with weight management. This is the main secret to my dainty figure. I am always on grilled radstag. The radstag field dressing station was introduced in the Once in a Blue Moon update, and I got it from the whole Rip Daring adventure, but you can also get it from Mortimer over at Crater. Okay, now, boys and girls, like I said, there are more cool things that produce more cool things, but these are my favorites. Are these items life-changing? Not really, <laughs> they're just cool and helpful. You can have a camp and play a game without these things, but they sure save a lot of time and trouble running around Appalachia and collecting stuff to scrap. I like to just make my rounds around the camp and click, 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 scrap all junk, boom, all set, takes just a few seconds. Remember that most of these fall under the resources category, or water in case of the water boiler which means that none of them can be set up in your shelter. And when set up in your camp, you can only place one of a kind. So these are also some things to consider when you're setting up your camp. I hope this video inspired you to go collect some new plans and maybe dust off some old ones to spruce up your camp to be both attractive and functional. Always check other players' vending machines too for plants that you may not know yet. Thank you so much for watching. Um, noodle pants. One half of Game Aviator.
Please remember to like this video if you're still here, I imagine you do. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already, and stay safe out there, Vault Dwellers. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride, with dangers untold and nowhere to hide.